bit of a different craft this time we are going to make a DM screen that is going to have uh, magnets on the inside so you can swap out and put, have it how you want for whatever game you want. Hello and welcome to the Battle and Barrow and a bit of a different crafting video. Uh, this session we are going to make a DM screen. I've shown this off before in the video, but I'm going to go remake. I want to remake it because when I made mine, I made it in portrait and I want to make it in landscape. So I'd have the same amount of real estate space, but I can see over it easier so I can see the tabletop quicker. What this is, is um, on the inside, if you haven't seen that video, it's magnetized, uh, very difficult to show here without knocking the mic. So these bits here, these are magnetized so I can have them in whatever order I want and whatever I need in here. Sometimes the retail DM screens have too much basic stuff. Great if you're a beginner DM, but sometimes you know, you get it. You, you know some of the stuff they're displaying. I need some other stuff that doesn't come up very often or in my case, custom stuff like my time sheet here so I can keep track of time and things like that. And on the front of this, there is places where I can slot in uh, pictures. So I can, whatever environment the players are in, I can slot in a picture so it's not just a generic picture. I can incorporate it into the layout of the board. Hello, I just realised I'm covering my face up to the mic. Uh, this is inspired by and based on something that uh, Wylock made years and years and years ago. I can't seem to find that video uh, on his channel anymore. Um, so it's going to be similar to that, but I've got my own twist on it anyway. Um, so thanks to Wylock for the inspiration for that. Yeah, let's get crafting. Uh, going to need some A4 foam board to start, but I've ordered A3 foam board. And why is that? So this is the reason why I ordered an A3 box is because when I last ordered some foam core, I ordered A4. I put the box lid down on my desk next to me and my cat dived in there and used it as a bed. Um, he was far too big for it, as you can see he's exploded out here. <laughs> so I thought I'd treat him to an A3 <laughs> box lid, so that is the reason why I'm using A3. Of course, it means I'm going to have to cut the A3 sheets down to A4. The things I do for my loved ones. <laughs> And of course, when it arrives, it doesn't arrive in a box. It arrives in a uh, just a, a bag. I mean, it was in a box, but it was in a bigger box with lots of other stuff I ordered, not in a separate box like what the A4 came in that I ordered. So my cat has to remain in his little box and I've got to cut down some A3 into A4 for no particular reason. Oh hum, I'll do that and when it's A4, we'll carry on. One thing I've noticed about this phone port I have bought is it doesn't have any paper, it's just the foam with a, you know, the shiny bit of the foam surface underneath. There's no paper. I don't think there is. I suppose there is, but it's really weird. It's really weird. It's not what I'm used to. It's a bit more flexy as well, but not to worry. I don't care about that too much. I've cut some to A4 and the camera's gone blurry so it can't handle the awesomeness of the black. And I've got the uh, sheets here. That all I'm going to do is, using PVA, just stick these on and do that four times. Uh, which I won't do on camera because obviously my camera can't handle the awesomeness and it keeps going blurry. So we got it to stick up PVA glue. Let's get, I'm going to get glue in. At this stage we have the foam board, magnetic sheet, I've got to do the front bit where I'm going to uh, slide my images in. On my old one I had uh, the slot as like half inch card either side, I'm going to make this a full inch just because the paper was a nightmare to get in and it would just flop out. So for this what we need to do is add some spaces in first, so we're going to need three bits of chipboard. Uh, two bits are going to be the same length as the foam board and one is going to be 
the width of the bottom here minus the width of two of these pieces and we are just going to glue those into place. I'm just going to use hot glue for this. With those in place we can now glue the actual front bits on. These are again chipboard, uh, same length as before. Like right, this, uh, but a width now, a um, width, an inch width, and then a bit that will fit in between them, and again, that is an inch. So, for this, I'm just going to run some bead of glue along here. What I'm going to do is what I did wrong last time when I made mine is I, when I glued them in, I pushed them down too much, so they were folded into the board rather than upwards. So I'm just going to use this as a spacer. Just so when I push down like this, it's not angling down. Hopefully that makes sense. So, and I've got a nice big wide gap there in between. So the paper can easily slot in. Whereas before I found it was pushed in, what are doing actually? It pushed in too much, a difficult to slot in. So with this spacer in, it will just make it make sure that doesn't happen um, so for this end bit I'm going to need to make sure I can pull bits out so what I need is two log bits so that now I can easily slot a bit of paper in this is from one of my um, portrait ones it is the Warhammer uh, fourth edition screen so yeah that will fit in there lovely and it holds it in nice so I'd obviously cut that to size when I print it out yeah that is a uh, wonderful that is what I'm looking for and we'll end up with something like this um, now on the other side the magnetic side I, we're gonna repeat it putting in the spacers just the spacers only this is to allow for I grab my one of my old ones that I made. Spacing for these uh, bits to fit in, so when it all folds together, because the chipboard is going to be thicker than this, they allow spacing for those. Now, at this stage, you may be asking why I didn't just put magnetic sheets on both sides and then when I put my image on, put that onto a magnetic sheet. Sure, you can do this, but that'll be really expensive. The magnetic sheets are quite expensive. Um, so this way it's just a cheaper way of doing it. I can just print something out, slot it in. But this here, this is where I need my magnetic stuff because I'm going to want it arranged as I want it and um, put, use it for different games for a start. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to glue these into places. Yeah, so different games, different. Um, I also, even in D&D, I will take inspiration from sort of different versions of the game. So I want that to be represented here, different charts from different versions. I'm going to stop waffling and get on with this, so uh, I'll, I'll do this now. Next up we are going to make the hinges. Um, for this I'm going to make them out of a uh, sort of serial box card. The um, reason I'm not going to use chipboard is it's too brittle, it tears easier, believe it or not. So for this I've got a bit of serial box card that is the same length uh, or height as the piece so that's about 21 centimeters and it's the width of two bits put together and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna score it down the middle to help with the fold I'm just gonna then fold it in half And you will need two of those. I am also going to need a uh, middle hinge. Uh, so this will be, it will, what will happen is it will fold out from here. And then these bits here will fold out inside. Uh, so for this, I'm going to need a bit that is the width of all of it all together. Um, and again, same height. 
and the score on this will only need to be it's only going to be attached on the two outer bits when we get to do that so it's just going to be the width of those which is effectively that's that width there so I've measured that out and I'll score this up and fold this up but before we glue them on I'm going to paint these black so once I fold them and we come, I'll come back when I've painted them they're dry and we're ready to glue time to glue it together so take two pieces and make sure the what will be the image side is facing out on one I'm going to use hot glue for quickness I would probably recommend PVA or wood glue for this for you guys but so you if you ever make one of these yours will be better than mine uh, what I'm gonna do is run on some glue make sure I've got plenty not too much I don't want it squidging out um, and then that down flat work quick to make sure that it's all in place which isn't here move it around to uh, pull off any excess hot glue in a bit. I'll make sure it's stuck on there. Okay, you gotta have some excess hot glue. And then take the next part, and one important thing to get right is we want these bits at the bottom. So don't glue it in the so bottom there, top there very 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 important uh, so we're going to do now get some hot glue on this other bit time well, I prefer PVA a lot of the time but when making videos hot glue it is push down just to hold it in place I'm sure we haven't glued it together but yeah we got a hinge we're gonna need to do that with the other one which I've already done and now we've got a hinge the other side now for this the problem is we're both these hinges this side and all we're going to do is glue one at a time what I'm going to do is take one and again important thing to make note is we want those to be the same way which they weren't so that was a lucky like you said so I'm going to take one set just for now and just on this side here, I'm going to put some glue. bigger hinge and stick it right on the end to give me lots of room here. So make sure it's all in place and held in nicely. And I'm going to Repeat that process for this end here, just this bit here, not this and not this. So again, really paying attention to these bits here. Thank you. 
any uh, gooping out hot glue, as I said, can be removed. Okay, uh, what I want to do is make sure I don't glue it shut. That will be horrible at this stage, so what I'm going to try and do is not do that. Easier said than done, of course. So now I'm just going to glue this into place at the end here. Got hot glue all over my fingers, all over where it should go. Okay, and now what we should have is, I'll show you here, it should open here, allow me to pull these open, Ooh, like so, and can we see this, I'll do a different angle a bit later on, we have big long DM screen. I shall adjust the camera angles uh, to show you it a bit later on and we can then fill it with well things like this we can pop this in travel pace and what have you and this is the first scene I'm going to use um, print it out um, four pages uh, use a bit of software called posterizer to do it uh, it's probably a bit printed out a bit too small, but for the purpose of this, that's fine. Maybe a bit, a bit of a gap here and there. Uh, so what I'm going to try and do is I'll probably trim it down so you can see that's so the edge. Whoop, you can't see that because I don't have it on camera. So the edge of this would be here. So I'm going to trim it down so cut that bit down so there'll be a bit wiggle room. Mike goes here, so it'll just be a bit at the top. I'll probably get rid of so it'll be black. So sitting like that, that's fine. But before I trim it, I think I am going to uh, laminate these uh, to protect them and you know make sure nothing spills on them and they don't get bent up. So I'm going to laminate them first before I come. And with that, that's how this is going to fit in here. Laminate had the uh, added bonus of making it really easy to get in here. Um, so it has a nice black board around. Um, it's it's just going to add to it. Um, you can have a look at it properly set up now. It's rather than my camera doing this. I'll get it set up on the table. Get some shots of it all unfolded, and uh, you can have a look at it. Yeah, I'm really pleased with it. It's going to be easier to look over rather than my portrait one. Um, I know with my portrait one. What am I going to do with it? Right here, that's my original one. I'll probably be giving this away at some point in the future. Um, it might be useful for someone to have. So yeah, look out for that in a future video. Uh, giving away this. Uh, when you're being for a chance of winning a uh, custom DN screen like this, subscribe to the channel. Um, but for now, let's get it set up and have a look at it. Okay, so let's look at this side first. So uh, this is just a sort of standard, very generic scene that I can put on if I'm in the valley, but I have other things that I could use as well. Um, which I have here. These are now laminated to make them easier. So if I was in town, uh, I could use this that in there like so uh, just out of interest I know these are made from posterizer I just find a big long image that's wide enough to crop down and do that if anyone's interested in a detailed video on that let me know but I also have things like just a very generic sort of autumny wilderness type scene here and Potion underwater. Ooh. But yeah, I'll be making probably more of these as and when I need it. Let's look at the interesting bit on the other side. And here we are. So here I have various different bits and pieces. Oops, I got stuck there. Oh, I've still got a. Uh, yeah, so 
it's on a previous game. So I have things I don't have on all the time, such as conditions, but when there is a condition that is in effect, I can just put it anywhere on the board just to remind me of that, what that rule is. Uh, I have my name generator here for NPCs, so I can quickly roll with if, if there's an unexpected NPC that I don't have planned. I have it here because I'm carrying me constant at the moment. I've got uh, Fiation and Trelladar in here, so I can get both covered here. Uh, I have female, male, and surnames, so you roll two d20s. So if I got 12 and I'm rolling a female, that'd be Pet and five Petnia. Uh, surname would be Petnia Ertunia. Good name, good name. Uh, here I have, I'll try and hold it a bit so it doesn't go all shaky. Put it down for a bit. Here, this is laminated. This is my time sheet for the game so I can have accurate timekeeping uh, and just a reminder of how long things take. Always important. Uh, I think modern D&D doesn't really go in for this too much but I'm old school and I love a good bit of timekeeping it adds drama to it when they're torch or lanterns are about to go out and poof they're in darkness combat rounds also important uh, here I have uh, just a plain bit of laminated sheet that I'm gonna improve I'm gonna put it this way so I can write notes in so I have my players names and here I just have little bits that were important to me during that game uh, here I have the crit hit table uh, lich and the fumble table, which I get from Seft Skorkowski. That was great. Uh, here I have Turning Undead from 2nd edition, because I am rolling a Frankenstein game, so that's important. And travel rates here. Um, probably going to be changing these and the mains out soon uh, for various other things. Uh, but yes, so here I have things from Beckme, uh, Retainer. Retainer and monster reaction because everyone needs should be using moral, morale. But yes, the whole point of this is that if, if I decided to run a different game, I could just remove these and put some other ones in. These are actually pure Beck Me ones here, so you know, fighter experience table. If I was going to run Beck Me, I could just put these in. But equally, if I was running Call of Cthulhu, fighting fantasy, you know, anything that I could think of. I don't have to have a whole new DM screen, I can just pull these out and it's reusable. This has been uh, great, uh, I love this. Um, what am I going to do with the old one? Uh, the old one I may give away in a future video, so if you're interested in maybe potentially winning that, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. But for now, that is it for this video. Uh, if you want to ask me anything leave a comment down below uh, and I shall answer to the best of my ability uh, but for now I think we'll leave it there stay safe take care see you in the next one